Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by the Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. Let us worship God this night. Merry Christmas, and welcome to this service of worship at St. Andrew's Church. I'm sure that I'm not alone when I say that this has been the most unusual Christmas season and certainly the most unusual Christmas Eve service that I've ever been a part of. But all of us at the church do pray for God's richest blessing to be with you and your loved ones and our church community and indeed our wider world as we go through this often challenging time. As we gather together today to celebrate Christ's birth and to envision the wondrous future that God has for this world, may God's peace and blessing truly be with you. We also wanted to extend a very special thanks to everyone who participated in putting the service together, to the readers and to the members of the church choir and the St. Andrew's choristers. Your hard work is very, very greatly appreciated. We also wanted to send a very special thanks to everyone who participated in keeping St. Andrew's a vital and vibrant place over the past year, including during the time of pandemic and closures. It has been a challenging time, but your hard work has been a true blessing. May God's peace and blessing be with you, not only in this season, but as this new year begins. God bless you all. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, for to you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus has arrived in grace and mystery, renewing faded hopes and announcing peace to a weary world. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. Jesus comes among us in power and glory inspiring joy, and calling us to lives that are full of God's love. Jesus, the light of the world, is born. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our lives. Let Christ's light shine in the darkest corners of our world. God is with us. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, as we celebrate this Christmas, transform our hearts and our lives so that your good news is not an old story, but a fresh truth lived out every day through the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. 
On this blessed night, holy and loving God, you stir in our hearts and bring joy to our lives. You stir in our minds and bring wisdom to our thoughts. You stir in the world and bring hope to our future. You came as a little child, stirring up our praises. So now we come to adore you with the angels, to bow with the shepherds, to kneel in wonder with the Magi, to ponder your mystery with Joseph, to love and cherish you with Mary. We come to you with humble hearts, full of joy because you came to us first. God of mystery and major, as we listen to the familiar story of your coming among us as a child of flesh and blood, open our minds and hearts so that we may hear these wondrous events with new understanding, wisdom, and joy. We pray in the name of the one who is Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they had lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing which has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Ah, Christmas Eve, that wonderful, peaceful, familiar, predictable night of the year. We sing carols with crowds of friends and strangers. We gather together in the old church that we come to year in and year out to hear the old stories and to light candles, to do all of these things that we do just like we do every year. Well, perhaps not every year. This year, Christmas Eve is not going to be like every other year. Instead, Bob and I are here at the church more than a week before Christmas, appropriately distanced from each other in this beautiful old space to record parts of the service long before Christmas Eve rolls around. There are no crowds of carolers around us, no brass instruments or thundering organ swells lifting our singing into that joyful noise that we're all so familiar with on Christmas Eve. There are no beautiful choirs raining down their wonderful voices upon our ears, no kids excitedly wondering what Santa is about to bring them, no parents worrying that everyone else in the pews around them might get distracted by those squirming kids. There's no joyful expressions of goodwill to friend and stranger, no hugs and handshakes, no solemn, peaceful moments of contemplation as we join together around the communion table in the midnight hour to break bread and share the cup and give thanks for everything that this season means. Instead, we stand here today, a week before Christmas, without any of the familiar things that we all come to expect and enjoy on Christmas Eve. Nor will there be any of those beloved, familiar things for any of us by the time that you are watching this when December the 24th rolls around again. But perhaps, perhaps, perhaps this lack of the familiar, this absence of the comfortable and the expected might actually offer an intriguing and even important way to enter into the Christmas story this year. Because at its heart, the Christmas story is not meant to be familiar. It's not meant to be comfortable. Virtually nothing that happens in this ancient story was familiar or comfortable or expected. Yes, there were the long-standing expectations proclaimed by the prophets of old, like Isaiah. There would come a time they had declared when a child would be born for us, a son given to us, who would come to bring justice and righteousness to this world, a king who would serve and even suffer rather than exalt himself over those who he ruled. 
We read those ancient words, those wondrous passages, and we see in them the trajectories that the prophetic imagination set out, the visions that they etched into the human spirit, the longings that they named, the hopes that they articulated. But that actual event, that moment when all of those hopes and dreams and visions and expectations came true, well, it wasn't quite as glorious as anyone might have expected. A young woman unexpectedly becoming pregnant, sharing that news with her fiancé in a moment that would not have been comfortable. And when it came time to give birth, it was not in familiar, comfortable surroundings. It was instead in a cattle stall. Then a group of night laborers came trundling into town from the fields, suffering from what must have seemed to anyone who encountered them, like they were all suffering from some strange collective delusion about legions of angels and heavenly visitors singing about the dawn of a new and lasting peace. One can only imagine the ramblings of those delusional shepherds Ramblings which would not have brought a great deal of comfort or ease to the townsfolk of Bethlehem. And things only actually got more unfamiliar, more uncomfortable, more unexpected from there. Wise men wandering in from distant lands. Elderly people in the temple precincts seeing the child and declaring that now they could depart from this world in peace. Fishermen and tax collectors, and prostitutes, and outcasts, invited to come and follow a young man who had told strange stories and performed even stranger signs and wonders. And his words? Well, they might have seemed familiar in a way since they echoed the visions of the ancient prophets, even as they seemed to speak with a truth and authenticity that cut to the very heart of reality itself. But still, his words and stories were unfamiliar, so unfamiliar in fact that their messages were so unexpected half the time that his own friends and followers didn't know what he was talking about most of the time, it seems. And uncomfortable? Absolutely. Provocative, unyielding, wondrous, inspiring words and actions that challenged those who used power, whether it was religious or political or economic or social power, in ways that were self-serving rather than for the good of others. And we all know how it ended for that child of Bethlehem, not in a familiar, comfortable, expected place, but instead on a crude, painful cross. Not how anyone expected the life of the Messiah to end, but that's much later in the story. For now we ponder the manger, the birth, the beginning of the story. And we do so at the end of a difficult year. There's been a lot that's happened over the past year that is uncomfortable. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupting almost every part of our lives Anxieties and uncertainties about our health, our employment, our loved ones, our social safety net, our financial future as individuals and as communities and as nations. We've adapted to unfamiliar practices and protocols that none of us expected to have to learn when this year began. And there's been much in our wider society that has made us feel uncomfortable and perhaps even anxious at times. We've wrestled with profound and important yet uncomfortable questions about the presence or absence of racial justice and equality in our world. We've seen bitter and often nasty political campaigns played out. We've wondered about the best ways that we are to educate and protect our children. We've had to adjust to remote learning and online gatherings. We've had to close schools and churches and restaurants and theaters. We've lamented our inability to be together with loved ones, sometimes even in the most sad and mournful moments of their lives. There are many words that come to mind when we try to sum up what 2020 has been like, but familiar and comfortable and expected are not words that jump to mind very quickly. 
And that's why the Christmas story bears perhaps an extra degree of pondering in the midst of such a time as this. Because the experiences of the characters in this story were filled with unfamiliar, uncomfortable, unexpected moments. And yet it was in those very experiences that the presence of God was revealed in this world. And that presence revealed in the child of Bethlehem and in the life of the carpenter of Nazareth, that presence changed things. No longer could people remain familiar and comfortable with situations that were not in line with God's intentions for this world. The ways of Christ were and the ways of Christ are meant to make us uncomfortable with the way that things are, if the way that things are is not the way that things should be. Which actually might seem troubling to us, but it's actually good news. Because the kingdom that Christ came to inaugurate, the new way of being that he demonstrated, was rooted in his vision of a different way for this world, whereas Isaiah envisioned justice and righteousness would be realized. Where, as the angels sang, there would be peace and goodwill towards all people. Where, as Jesus' actions revealed, the hungry would be fed, the sick would be healed, the marginalized would be embraced, the sinners would be forgiven, and love would reign supreme and be the overarching rule of all of life. Where, as he showed in his suffering and pain and death, death itself would be swallowed up forever by the powerful grace and the death-defying love of Almighty God. And it is good news in each one of our lives, because that same God continues to be born among us, continues to be with us when the events of this world and the events of our lives seem strange and unexpected and unfamiliar and uncomfortable. God is with us even in those moments, and in fact, can use even the most difficult moments of our lives in wondrous and transforming ways. So this year, be of good cheer. God is in the midst of this uncomfortable, unfamiliar, unexpected time. The God who loved this world enough to send Jesus among us as our Messiah, as our Christ, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, as our friend, still loves this world and still loves each and every one of us. Merry Christmas, and may God bless you, and may God be revealed to you in unfamiliar and unexpected ways in this season of comfort and joy and in the years to come. Thanks be to God. And amen. Let us pray. God of hope and healing, as you came to us in love as the Christ child in Bethlehem, so we come to you with love and concern for the world. In this time of quiet and contemplation, we remember those who live close to the edge of survival, worrying about where their next meal will come from and where they will find shelter. We pray for those who will spend Christmas alone, or in hospital, or weighed down by grief. We pray for those who work tonight, while we rest. We pray for those who have lost their sense of joy and wonder, and whose vision is clouded by cynicism and despair. We pray for those who face the year ahead with fear and anxiety because of the pandemic and the uncertainty that surrounds us. We pray for those who celebrate the birth of a new life, a new love, or a new way of being. We pray for those whom we have loved and who loved us, who now dwell in the eternal joy of your presence. We give thanks for all the gifts of this life, and we pray our prayers in the name of the child of Bethlehem, who is the Lord of all. Amen. I just want to take this time to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and all the best for the new year.
Often we would shake your hand at the back door and wish you Merry Christmas. We can't do that this year, but the sentiment is the same, and we wish you all God's blessing and peace at this time. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. We love because God first loved us. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit dwell with you and those you love this night and forevermore. Amen.